Well, the Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem recently returned from a visit to the only Catholic parish in Gaza, and he praised the attitude of the people he met there while highlighting the difficulties they're facing. I didn't hear in almost four days one word of anger, nothing. Pain, suffering, a complain, of course, <laughs> you cannot not to complain, but not anger or, or resentment and so, which is, I mean, something not to be given for granted. I'm meeting with journalists. Cardinal Pierre Batista Pizzaballa says the humanitarian situation has improved, though it remains mostly critical. He met with the faithful in the area, celebrated masses, and led prayers. He also visited a cemetery, blessing the graves of the faithful departed, especially the two women killed inside the parish compound last December. And for analysis, we turn now to Jason Jones, founder of the Vulnerable People Project. Jason, always good to be with you, my friend. It's good to see you, Tracy. Thanks for having me. Here. Absolutely. You know, I want to talk about the work the VPP is doing in Gaza. A lot of great work there. But before we do, I want to talk about the Christians in the region. I mean, there is a very long and rich history there, it's one that a lot of people don't know about. Yeah, it's sorrowful that we don't know about it because this is the first century church. In fact, I, when I was at Mass for Pentecost, the first reading from Acts says there were Greeks, there were Medes, they were from Libya, they were from Africa, they were Arab, they were Jew, they were from the world. Well, this is who was there in the first century. So the Christian community of Gaza is the oldest Christian community in the world. And I have Palestinian Christian friends who tell me they always get a kick when someone says, well, when did your family convert? And they can say, oh, the first century. These are first century Christians and they're suffering horribly, 250 calories a day. The tragedy of the two, the two women, the mother and the daughter, going to church who were shot. Recently, a young 18-year-old woman collapsed of heat stroke, and the IDF refused to allow aid to be administered, and she died. So it's quite, it's quite sorrowful what's happening there to the Christians. It really is. Do you have a sense of, you know, what are the numbers there of Christians living in that region? Well, there are several hundred families still there, over 400 families. In Holy Family Parish alone, there are 560 Christians seeking aid. Many of them come from the Orthodox Church, was, which was bombed in October. So you have Orthodox Christians um, and Catholic Christians working together to feed everyone, to provide food, to provide fuel, to provide a place to, to, uh, for hygiene, for basic hygiene. There are a lot of Catholic organizations doing amazing work over there, including yours. Uh, tell us what VPP is doing. Well, our primary mission has been what we did in Afghanistan, Ukraine, and Sudan, which is evacuation. So we have a triage list of those who are wounded, especially pregnant women, wounded children. We're evacuating someone this week, who a young nine-year-old girl whose pelvic bone was shattered in an explosion. And we recently evacuated a woman who was starving. Her organs were failing. She was pregnant with, she thought, twins. Um, she was able to get herself across the border with the, the kindness of the hearts of the guards, which is really unprecedented. Then VPP got her to a, a good hospital where she gave birth with a big smile on her face, and she had triplets. And so that was just a beautiful moment in the midst of all this tragedy. How is she doing now, do you know? She's doing great, and I'll send you the picture. I've never seen a smile so big. The smile I'm surrounded. And in fact, I got the photo, and I saw the, the twins. I showed it to like 15 of my friends, and then one of them finally said, there's a third baby there. Ah. And then I looked back at the message from my team, and they, they did say triplets, but I missed that. So she didn't even know she was having triplets? No, she thought she was having, she, she knew she was having twins, or she thought she was having twins, but she had triplets. That's an amazing story, especially uh, among all the death and destruction that we hear in that region. To have a story of hope and birth and new life is really a hopeful story. What's your hope for the people over there? Well, I would echo the Holy Father, and I would echo Cardinal Pizabala that we should pray for peace. The people of Gaza, the Palestinians, and the Israelis, they have an intertwined future. They can only have peace together. There won't be peace for the Israelis until there's peace for the Palestinians. There won't be peace for the Palestinians until there's peace for the Israelis. And my prayer is not only is there peace for both, that they become each other's best friends and partners in leaving to their posterity a culture of life and a civilization of love, and that's my prayer. Yeah, we need those prayers for sure. Jason, thank you so much, for, my friend, for coming on, all that you're doing. We really appreciate it. It's good to see you, and thanks for having me on. Absolutely. God bless.